Let's talk about the fetal pig vessels that you'll see in dissection. We're using the lab list for this spring. And note that the vessels we're going to talk about first are the ones anterior to or above the diaphragm. In humans, they would be above the diaphragm. In fetal pigs, they'll be anterior to because fetal pigs uh, are quadrupeds. So anything closer to the head is considered to be anterior to or above the diaphragm. Let's look at veins first. We'll look at veins first because veins will appear to be uh, most visible when you first open the pig to look in. They'll be towards the surface or on top. So the words here we're seeing are hemiazygos. Hemi means half, azygos. So hemiazygos vein, which is a vein to the left of the heart that runs down next to the descending uh, thoracic aorta. And then we'll note that the right and left uh, veins all converge or meet on a right and left brachiocephalic trunk. Now let's look at this word brachiocephalic. So brachio means arm, is in the upper part of the arm. Remember the forearm is the antebrachium and then the arm where the biceps and triceps are is the uh, brachium. And then cephalod means head. So this just means arm, head, trunk. And a trunk should tell you that this is going to branch off. So the trunk of a tree would have several branches off of it. And you can call this the brachiocephalic vein if you want to, but if you call it brachiocephalic trunk, then it'll remind you or cue you uh, during an exam that it has some branches off of it. <clears throat> the first branch coming from the uh, most distal, because these are veins, and returning back to the uh, anterior vena cava, or what you know as the superior vena cava in humans, the first branch we'll see furthest out at the elbow is called the median cubital vein. Median meaning middle, cubital meaning elbow. So this is the vein on the anterior portion of the elbow. You can find it, I'll use my own arm, you can find it by making a, an M or a W, however you want to phrase it, and putting it on your arm across this way and note uh, the, the third digit would be pointing just past your thumb. So there's my thumb. This middle finger will be pretty much over the median cubital vein. So if I were to take my finger away, you'll see this vein here. That's the median cubital vein. And what it's used for in healthcare until you know other places you can do this, but initially in healthcare, it's used for venipuncture, right? So we'll associate the median cubital vein with venipuncture in humans. Now you won't see it on the fetal pig. I don't have it dissected out may not be visible on most of the pigs, but I might ask you about it in its relevance towards human uh, human medicine. So median cubital vein for venipuncture in humans, and there's a left and a right. The brachial vein, which is on the arm itself, so anything on the arm, we're gonna call it brachial, whether it's an artery or a vein uh, in this particular lab. The axillary vein, think axillary, we're still outside the ribs because axillary means armpit. Remember in chapter one, when you learned the regions uh, of the body, like buccal and brachial and all that. So axillary was armpit. So we've gone from elbow to upper arm to armpit. So you wanna call it median cubital to brachial to axillary. Once we move, uh, into the ribs, meaning towards the midline, towards the heart, once we go uh, into the thoracic cavity itself, or we're medial to the ribs, now we're going to be under the clavicle. So under the clavicle could be phrased as subclavian or subclavicular. So here you see the word subclavian vein. So we've gone from the elbow to the upper arm to the armpit, and now we're underneath the clavicle and we're about to make our way back to the uh, anterior vena cava. The next vein that we'll see, which is above, these are these four have to do with the arm. So the next vein above that will be the subscapular vein. And clearly that comes from um, just sub or underneath the scapula. So think of it as coming from over the shoulder and back towards the heart. The external jugular vein will be the third uh, branch off of this brachiocephalic trunk. So the external jugular vein will be the more lateral of the two jugular veins. And then the most more medial will be the internal jugular vein. 
the internal jugular always runs uh, right alongside the common carotid. So when you see those two together, you can note that that's the uh, internal jugular and the common carotid artery running together. Then we finally reach our brachiocephalic trunk, and then that merges with the other brachiocephalic trunks. So you have a left and a right, and those merge into the singular anterior vena cava. And let's not forget that hemiazygos that I mentioned at the beginning. We're going to see that. So let's look at a picture of it. This is the map, like I like to call it, that we drew in lab. So I'm just going to go over this map with you. So our words again, if you'll follow, follow along with your list, I'm just going to go along with the list. When we look at one of these maps, though, we want to always begin with the diaphragm as our divider because the lists all are relevant or relative, excuse me, to the diaphragm. So if we're above the diaphragm or anterior to it, the, these are the vessels. If we're below the diaphragm or posterior to it in a quadruped, if we're posterior to it, then these are the vessels. So you wanna have that diaphragm in your mind when you're studying. Are you above it or are you below it? So right now we're above it or anterior to it. We note the heart. Uh, the chambers that we're already familiar with, the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. And we remember that blood is only allowed to return to the heart to an atrium. So it can either come in uh, deoxygenated on the right side or with oxygen on the left side uh, before it goes out the aorta. So we're coming into the heart because we're talking about veins. So we're coming into the heart uh, on the right side here. Let's look at this right atrium. The right atrium receives the anterior vena cava and the posterior vena cava. Now you know these as the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava in humans. Now, if we go along with the list, I just wanted to point that out. If we go along with the list, we're gonna start with the hemiazygos. And here it is over on the left side. And we remember that we are, uh, we are facing our client or our patient. So this is the left side. The hemiazygos is only on the left side. It is the only uh, venous structure or vessel that is singular. All of the other ones are gonna have a pair once we get up here. They'll all have a mirror image. But the hemiazygos stands alone. In humans, there's an azygos on the, on the right and a hemiazygos on the left, but pigs, uh, fetal pigs only have a left, uh, only have a hemiazygos. So that's what's drawn here. The hemiazygos is draining the intercostals and uh, the area there. So we wanna think, well, what are we doing? We're coming in on the left side of the body. The aorta is also on the left side of the body. And I drew that here so that you could always find the hemiazygos. It's running with the descending or thoracic aorta. Remember that anything above the diaphragm is thoracic and anything below the diaphragm would be a domino pelvic. So we could call that aorta thoracic as long as it's above the diaphragm. All right, so the hemiazygos is the only, is one by itself, and it comes back up and uh, gives its deoxygenated blood into the anterior vena cava on the left side of the body. You can just move the pig's lungs and heart out of the way and you'll see the hemiazygos running with the aorta on the left. Let's start out here at the median cubital. Remember, we're following our list, and the list starts out at the median cubital vein in the elbow. And remember that was the one. Now the radial and ulnar is not drawn on the pig. We're just starting near the hoof at the pig's elbow. And so this is the median cubital vein. Whether or not you see that in a dissection uh, is irrelevant. It is important that you note that this median cubital vein is used for venipuncture in humans. The next one that you'll definitely be able to see in the fetal pig is the vein along the arm itself. So when you're on the arm flesh uh, itself, if you're on the muscle, anything on the arm itself that you'll be able to see should be labeled brachial vein, brachial vein. So now we've covered the arm. We've gone from elbow to arm, or I mean to upper arm. Now we're gonna go into the armpit. So that area, this area here, is called the axillary vein. So we've gone from elbow to arm, 
to axillary or armpit, axillary vein. We're moving towards the heart, so we need to go through the ribs. So as we cross through the ribs, now we're underneath the clavicle. And this little part here is not very long, not very big, but this is the subclavicular vein or subclavian vein, excuse me, the subclavian vein. So we've gone elbow, brachium, axillary or armpit, ribs, and then we get to underneath the clavicle, which is subclavian. That runs into the brachiocephalic trunk. So this is the left brachiocephalic trunk. So you can see we've got four branches, one, two, three, four. And we've done the arm, that's the first branch. Let's do the next branch. The next branch is the subscapular vein. You can imagine the scapula over here above the pig's shoulder and the vein returning above and uh, back down towards the heart through the subscapular uh, channel towards the brachiocephalic trunk. So that's one, two. Let's do the third branch here. This is the most lateral of the two jugulars. This is the external jugular. The external jugular, you know, it's, a, it's a bit larger than the internal jugular in the fetal pig. So the external jugular will be the most lateral. And then we'll see the internal jugular. The internal jugular I mentioned is running with the common carotid. So I'll just put that in here. Here's the common carotid artery. So that you'll note that the internal jugular always runs with the common carotid artery. So I've got branch one, two, three, four, all coming off. If my hand is the brachiocephalic trunk, all coming off of the brachiocephalic trunk. Those brachiocephalic trunks, both of them, enter into the vena cava, in this case the anterior vena cava, and their blood uh, is dumped into the right atrium. So that's, that's the venous system. Let me show you all the veins as they are drawn out at the left and the right. Okay, and so here again we can see there's a median cubital just to orient ourselves and on this side we would be coming in the exact same way. And then here would be the subscapular, here would be the external, and here would be the internal jugulars, all arriving at the brachiocephalic trunks, whether they are the left side or the right side, and then entering into the anterior vena cava into the right atrium. And there's our hemiazygos, and there's our posterior vena cava.